This is actually really, really fine gauge, but it's, it's almost like this, okay? It's a strip, and you go in between the teeth, and then you file, 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 file. This really doesn't do that much because it's so light. It's more for polishing. But you can kind of see how it works, okay? You do each side. So the most I think you should have off between two teeth is 0.5 millimeters. That means 0.5 millimeters, which means 2.5 millimeters um, excuse me, 0.25 millimeters to each side of the tooth, the right and the left, okay? And the interproximal space would be 0.5 millimeters. That's the most. So make sure if you're getting IPR to document where you're getting it, just in case later you get another ortho case and they don't know. Because if we take off all your enamel, you're not going to have any protection for that tooth, and that tooth's going to need a root canal and a crown. So really, really important that you communicate that with your doctor if you have a history of IPR. So IPR is great. You can get a ton of IPR. Theoretically, if you do the math, if you do up to 0.5 millimeters on every single tooth, let's count how much we can get. That would make 6.5 millimeters total. Well, holy cow, 6.5 millimeters total is the size of one tooth, right? One premolar. Well, they may be like more like seven, eight. But there you go. You just got half the space you need just through IPR. Now you don't have to take out a tooth. Of course, we need other space, you know, either, either through pushing things back, pushing things forward, or when bending things out. So anyways, and then another good gauge, another tip if you're going to do interproximal adduction is to make sure your doctor is using this called an IPR gauge. So what you can do is a doctor will go in between the tooth that he just did, and there's little numbers on here, like this one is 0.25 millimeters, that kind of stuff. So you go ahead. You put it in and see if it, oh, see that one clearly doesn't fit, so that's not the right size. Do this one. Does not fit, not the right size. Nope. Try again. Ha ha! That's the size. Okay, so we actually did. Yeah, it was 0.25 millimeters. Very, very good. So we're here to talk about interproximal reduction. I got this cool sample in my unboxing from Justanko. It's a company based in Sweden. It's a pretty nifty IPR file here. So it basically has a handle. You can screw it on and off. They're different sizes, different gauges, and kind of is like the contact EZ one, but it's not as flexible. But I like that it comes on a handle because you can either do it like this or you can put it on the handle, which is neat. And then they also had some really nice IPR gauges that came with it. Oh, here they are. So these are like 100% a necessity. If you're going to do IPR, you have to have the IPR gauge, right? So you get your treatment plan from, you know, Invisalign or ClearCorrect or any number of aligner different companies. They're going to tell you that you need to do IPR. Of course, what you're going to want to do is figure out where are you going to stage this, right? Are you going to stage this at the beginning of your treatment, at the end of your treatment? If the teeth are really crowded, you really need to think about the staging because it may be very difficult to, you know, get in there, you know, if it's really, really crowded. So obviously, if it's straighter, it's easier to use something like this. But if it's crowded, you may need something more flexible to do it. So... In any case, make sure you always measure your IPR with your IPR gauge and you document it. Don't overreduce. I wouldn't recommend more than 0.5 millimeters per interproximal space over the lifetime of the case. So these should work really simply. You should be able to just put them in to measure the space and chart it, of course. So it should just go right down. And of course, I didn't do any here, so that's why it's not going down. But in any case, at least now you understand IPR. Um, pretty simple stuff. I do not really like it with a disc. Um, I do not like it with a burr. I like to do it with either this kind of thing or the contact EZ files or even the long kind of lightning strips are really good. After you're done, make sure you smooth and polish it. Some people like to use fluoride. It's a good conversation to have with your patient because some people are pro, some people are anti. So always good just to let the patient know how the experience is going to go. I mean, it's, it's really not a big deal. Just make sure you use a lot of cotton rolls to isolate the lip. That's like the worst thing that can happen is that you can nick the lip, right? Or nick the tissue. Um, if you use this kind of thing, you shouldn't be ledging the teeth. That's the main thing. It should go in real easily. And, you know, you have to get the smallest file you can initially to break the contact, and then you can use a bigger one. So these can usually be sterilized about maybe for six, seven, eight uses, and then you'll have to throw them away and get a new one. So um, 
you know, they can get a little expensive over time. But in any case, have some confidence with your IPR. The file's on a handle, right? Now watch this. You can take it off. I know I was telling you about Contact Easy strips and how much I like them. This is even cooler. So sorry, Contact Easy. You can adjust this dial. And by the way, these come in all different widths, single-sided, um, double-sided and stuff. But look at this. Right now it's straight, right? Can you see? Now I can adjust this dial right here and it actually pre-curves it. So this is awesome because you can pre-curve it and if you have crowded teeth, like I don't like to use straight files on crowded teeth when it's an initial case, but if you have crowded teeth, now you can get in there and you can file it, right? And it's already pre-curved, so you can go in on the crooked teeth. And then later, if you need to do IPR and it's straight, you can undo it and it can be straight and you can put it on the handle if it's easier for you. So that's just, I mean, this is the ultimate IPR solution. I really do think so. So make sure you ping the nice folks at Justenko in um, Sweden uh, if you're interested in their amazing IPR products. And do visit Straight Smile Solutions for all the rest of the information that you need to know about uh, orthodontics, aligners, indirect bonding, how to get great outcomes on your cases, how to select cases, et cetera, et cetera. Visit us at straightsmilesolutions.com. Keep those inquiries coming. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Have a great day.